Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And a couple cards using the Honey Bee Stamps Lovely Layers uh, Hummingbird die set. This was part of their most recent release. I combined it with some oldie but goodie Honey Bee products, including another Honey Bee Lovely Layers set, which was the Easter Lily Lovely Layers set that came out... A year or two ago? I'm not even sure. I'll have links to all the things. Um, so yeah, I did some very simple painting of these hummingbirds using my Distress mica stain sprays, which are all behind me because I love them. So I do have a playlist of videos I've done using mica stain sprays, which I will have linked at the end of this video. There are dozens of videos I've done using them. I also have a playlist of videos I've done using the Honey Bee Stamps Lovely Layers die sets because there are many that have come out over the years and I've done a bunch of videos, so same thing. That will be linked in the end screen at the end of this video. As always, I will have links to everything I used in the description box below the video if you expand it. The supply list, links all the supplies, link to my blog post, etc, etc. All of my links are affiliate links. That just means that if you click on one of my links and end up placing an order, I get a little kickback at no extra cost to you. I very much appreciate the support. And yeah, keep watching and I will show you guys how I made these cards. So I die cut all of the pieces for the Lovely Layers Hummingbird from some Canson XL watercolor paper. And I die cut enough to do two. And I'm just sticking all the pieces to one of my um, Altenew Ultra Sticky grids. So it just kind of holds it in place so I can paint each of the different pieces. And there is like, there is with all the Lovely Layers, there is a layering guide. Um, for this it's another one of those ones that once you kind of once you put the pieces together it's like oh this makes sense <laughs> it's another one of those ones where all of the debossed details are what you're going to see and all the flat areas is going to get you know the next layer adhered on top of it so no one's going to see that so I've got everything laid out and then like I said in the intro I'm using some distress mica stains to paint with I've done this in previous videos. The thing to remember with the mica stains is all the, the good shimmery bits settle to the bottom. So you need to shake it up really well. Um, Tim Holtz did do a video on his channel, gosh, like last year. I It was a while ago. You'd have to search for it if you haven't seen it. Where he decanted a bunch of the mica stain sprays into little like squeeze bottles to use for like painting and things. And I've thought about it, but honestly, I'm fine with using it how I use it here. <laughs> I just shake them up. Take out the little nozzle, tap a little bit onto a little palette like so, and then paint. That's it. Simple. So I will have links to the specific colors that I used for all this painting. But I started with Frozen Fog. And then I'm just I'm just using just a little just a little paintbrush, just a little size four paintbrush, and painting that on. So I started with the frozen fog. And then, um, and like I said, the areas that I'm painting right now, I know that for the most part, no one's going to see that, but just wanted to get some color down. And then I'm using Fortune Teller. Before I started painting, I did Google Hummingbirds just to kind of get some color inspiration. And then I was like, we can do whatever we want. They, they come in so many colors. They're so pretty. And yeah, so many of them have that, you know, if you watch videos of Hummingbirds, how the, their feathers are like shimmery like they're almost metallic oh they're so pretty I love hummingbirds anyway um the next color was bubbling cauldron so I'm adding some green and then I'm using juniper berry for some blue I'm gonna kind of mix some colors here and just I'm just having a good old time and you can kind of see here on camera that, that, that debossing I was talking about because that detail like some of the mica stain spray kind of settles into it you can see it there on the wings and I just I love it I love it. This is such a fun die set. So then the final color is Sugary Gumdrop. So I was painting that on and then as I was using up the color I would just add a little bit more. Again just shaking up the bottle so that I get the, the good shimmery bits to everything. And then this is where I start really sort of kind of blending colors together. So I was adding that juniper berry on the wings, blending it into the Sugary Gumdrop, just kind of letting everything 
just do its own thing. And I missed the like kind of the back of the hummingbirds on the main piece, but I will get back to that when I actually hear everything because that's when I noticed I was like, oh, <laughs> but I'll get to it. It's all good. So I added a bits of that fortune teller as well. I just wanted to bring in a little bit more of it because fortune teller is one of my favorites. Honestly, they're all my favorites. They're all like really it's shimmery. I don't care what color it is. If it's got shimmer in it, I love it. So I added just little bits of it here and there, you know, just just because. So um, and then went back in, added a little bit more of that sugary gumdrop to the one wing there because it was kind of fading out a bit. So once I got all of that applied and once I was kind of happy with what I had going on, I just took a little bit of black soot distress ink. You could use really any of the shimmers, that sort of a thing, but I just took black soot distress ink, smushed that on my palette, and I used that for the little eye and for the beak. So painted that on and then let everything dry. And then I'm just going to assemble. And like I said, it's it's really easy. It's it like I say this with every single lovely layer set, but it's true. Once you do it once, you know, once you just layer the you don't even and I did this before I even started filming. I just layered all the pieces, how they're supposed to go, and it just kind of clicks and it's like, okay, this makes sense. This is, you know, this goes here, this is what this is for, etc. Cause like some of these pieces, like this one, I was like, what? And then I was like, oh, okay, I get it. I get it now. <laughs> So, I mean, hearing all of the the pieces onto this and yeah, it as it comes together, it's like, oh, this is so cute. It's such a cute little hummingbird. I love it. So, adhered the little that little top piece there and then adhered the beak for the little tiny eye. I just used one of my embellishment wands just to pick it up because it is just tiny and there's emboss or deboss detail, so you know exactly where everything goes. It's it's pretty it's pretty simple. So got this little piece that covers that um, edge of the wing there. Got that adhered into place. And yeah, everything just fits. And that's how it is with the Lovely Layers sets. Everything just, just fits. So this gets adhered onto the body. And this is where I noticed, like when I adhered this, I was like, oh, I missed that spot um, on the back of the uh, little hummingbird there, which almost you could leave it, but I, I had nothing there. Like I didn't even have like a little frozen fog. I just completely, you know, it was right in front of my face. Forgot to paint it. No big deal. I'll just finish painting it once I'm done um, assembling everything. So that piece goes on there. And then this little, this little funny piece goes along the bottom portion of, of his little tail. So got that into place. And then that, that piece that funny little shape piece it lit it just fits in like a puzzle piece like the way the edges of the die cuts all fit in together it just butts right up there you go so you got this cute little hummingbird and then i pulled out the the bubbling cauldron and i'll add a tiny bit of the juniper berry as well shook those up put them on my palette so i can finish off um finish these off like paint them in and as I did with everything else and then off camera I actually ended up adding just a, a, a smidge more of that bubbling cauldron to like the blue areas just because I really like oh, I really like mixing blues and greens together they just and these two oh, they just look so nice so nice at the end of the video I will like turn on my flashlight so you guys can see like how shimmery sparkly these are they're fabulous I love it so painted the one that I'd already assembled painted the areas on the other one just to get it done, let that dry and assemble it. And then I pulled out the um, Lovely Layers Easter Lily die set. I did more than these. I'm just showing one one set, but I did several. Like I die got a whole bunch of pieces. This time I'm working on just some hammer mill white cardstock. I don't work with this stuff very often, um, but I have a lot of it because you know, it's, it's, it's popular in card making and I buy all the things that everyone else tells me to get. <laughs> It's very, the hammer mill is great for like hot foiling, things like that. I just honestly, I stick with my Simon So Stamp 120 smooth pound white, smooth white. Um, but yeah, this stuff's nice and it is kind of nicer sometimes dealing with some of the thinner card stocks when you are doing multiple layers. Anyway, I stuck the pieces to the sticky mat and I am using saltwater taffy distress ink and one of my waffle flower shader one plus blending brushes, keeping somewhat of a light hand. You know, because I wanted these to be just 
have a bit of color to them. I didn't want to leave them just plain white, but I also didn't want to make them super colorful. Although lilies, oh, they come in so many colors. I love lilies as well. I love all flowers. Anyway, I didn't want them to be super bright though, because you know, the hummingbird, the hummingbird's the focus. So I did that bit of blending. I used rusty hinge and um, vintage photo for the stamens of the flowers. Set those all those pieces aside after I was done with them. I'll come back to assembling them in a minute. For the greenery, I used uh, mowed lawn first, just my go-to, one of my fave greens. And then I'm going to go in with rustic wilderness. Just adds like the depth, love, love. Mowed lawn with rustic wilderness. If you want it brighter, another f absolute favorite combo that I've shown in a bajillion videos is twisted citron and rustic wilderness. Those two together, perfection. And then as a final little bit, I added forest moss, which just like really deepens it up. And I get, I did this over and over and over again, like off camera, all my greenery, all the things, stuff like that. Once I figured out how I want to blend things, et cetera, et cetera, it's, it's another sort of like little mass production method. And I'll just lay everything out and do it all in like the same step. I just didn't bother filming it because yeah, the, the, it was the exact same thing. And then that way I can zone out and I don't have to worry about like being on camera because more often than not when I'm zoning out, I like drift off screen. <laughs> so I did all my blending, got everything done. And then the assembling, like I'm showing right here right now, very, very simple with these. Um, that's how you assemble the pieces for the largest lily. And then the smaller one, it's again, largest to smallest, super, super simple. So I assembled all of the lily pieces and that was it because the greenery, there's no assembly needed. They're just leaves. And those I die cut extras of, which you'll see when I actually like start putting everything onto the card fronts. So I got everything adhered together and I just, same as with the uh, hummingbird, I used my craft tacky glue. So got all the, uh, the elements and whatnot assembled. And then for my background, I'm using Simon Says Stamps Peacock cardstock. And I cut a couple panels and then I'm using Honeybee's um, Kaleidoscope embossing folder. And I figured out for my Anna Griffin Empress die cut machine with these embossing folders, I need one cutting plate, the magnetic plate and the folder. And that works for me. And then like I always do with embossing folders, I lightly mist the cardstock with some water that just helps soften the paper fiber so you get a better embossed impression. And then I ran that through the machine and I've got this like just oh, lovely, lovely embossed background. There's something about 3D embossing on paper. It, I'm looking at the finished cards as I'm doing this voiceover and I'm just like, I love it. <laughs> so I embossed those panels with that kaleidoscope embossing folder and then let them dry because I kind of missed it. And yeah, I've got my uh, flower sack cloth. I lay that out just so I don't get water. Absolutely everywhere but you just need a light mist you don't need to like soak the cardstock so just a light mist will do and then yeah let those dry and then I trim them down because they were I cut my cardstock if I want it to be a2 sized and I'm running it through an embossing folder I cut it to larger than that because the you know pressing all that cardstock in depending on the type of embossing it does etc um you'll notice a lot of times if you had it exactly a two size to begin with it basically kind of shrinks if that makes sense so after everything was done i trimmed it down to a two sized after it had been embossed so four and a quarter by five and a half and then of course i was thinking about splatter the entire time i was doing this i decided to just splatter the lilies that's it so i put all those pieces into my splat box and then i shook up the sugary gumdrop mica stain again and i just used a little brush it's a little size two brush and I dipped it into the the mixture and splattered that onto all of these lilies so it's going to give them the splatter but you know a lot of lilies actually have that look um we were talking about that in a recent live not lilies but irises there's actually one called I think splatter matters which still need to hunt that down so I can plant that in my backyard <laughs> you all know if it's got a name like that I, I have to own it anyway splattered all my lilies and then I pulled out Another oldie but goodie set from Honeybee. This is the Daisy Layers bouquet set. I just wanted a couple of the sentiments from the set. It's like a big, it's a big stamp set with like gorgeous florals in it. But I just wanted some sentiments and I'm using that same peacock cardstock. Put it in my Misty, 
I used my anti-static powder tool that just helps prevent the embossing powder from clinging to anything other than the stamped image. And then I stamped the sentiments with clear embossing ink, moved it, rotated the cardstock so I could do it a second time. And then I'm coating that with some detail white embossing powder tapped off the excess then I'm going to melt that with my heat tool until everything is just smooth smooth shiny melted and then after I did that I'll use my little microfiber cloth to wipe away that excess anti-static powder so tiny little bit of elbow grease and does the trick so remove that and then I used the coordinating wafer dies from the um, stamp set to die cut all of these little sentiments out. So tape those into place with just little bits of washi tape that just helps prevent anything from shifting when I run it through my die cut machine. And then made sure I had the actual proper wafer die for that second sentiment. <laughs> so got everything die cut, decided to use the same card stock for my card bases as well. So I cut a sheet of that in half. So it was four and a quarter by 11. So I'm scoring it at five and a half inches. So these will be top folding A2 note cards. So four and a quarter by five and a half. So scored those. And then um, I'm going to adhere the kaleidoscope embossed panels to the card fronts. So just put craft tacky glue on there and then adhere that to the card front. Do that with the second one. So, and then sometimes I, you know, if it's darker cardstock, I will line the inside of the card with like a panel of white cardstock, etc. I found that this one wasn't super dark, so I decided not to. I like writing with a black pen on the inside, it'll be totally legible. If you want to get a little extra fancy, you can use a gel pen, you know, a white gel pen will look nice too. And then off camera, I had figured out my, my floral and greenery arrangement, and then I took a picture of it with my phone. And then I had that propped up so I could refer to that and then adhere everything. And then that's what I did on the first card front. And now I'm just following that on this one to make my life easier and to save on how long this video would be if you guys had seen me just sitting and fiddling and rearranging. Because <laughs> sometimes, honestly, that that takes a big chunk of time. I've talked about this. I'm not, that's not my forte, like floral arrangements. They, it takes me a while, like. It's just not where my brain goes, you know, but I figured it out, you know, where, how I was happy with it. And then, yeah, remember to take a photo. I've talked about this too. There have been times though. It's like, I figure it out. I take a photo and then I completely forget that I had the photo and <laughs> I'm a professional. Anyway, followed that and adhered all the little bits and pieces here. So I've got my greenery and my lilies. With the sentiments, I die cut kind of the the scraps and whatnot with the little coordinating wafer dies for the Hello Friend pieces so that I could just adhere them together, you know, stack them up, give them some dimension. So I die cut all of that and then stack those together. And then the little hummingbird, I put some thin foam squares on the back of to pop it up a little bit, but also it kind of evens it out with all the other layers that I've adhered to the card front. So got that popped into place adhered my sentiments and then on the inside of the cards this is why I had extra some extra greenery and extra one of the large lilies so I can just adhere that to the inside as well just because so gonna get those adhered into place and then I can adhere the um, final sentiment there to the inside of the card and then as my final my final little bit of embellishment I'm using the honeybee um, let's party gem stickers. I've talked about their gem stickers. I love them. I tend to hoard them. I can't help it because they're just, they're pretty and shiny and I'm a magpie, but making a point of like actually using them. So these are self-adhesive. So I just use my little die pick and peel them off the backing, stick them into place and we're good to go. So these ones were perfect because yeah, they have these kind of like peachy colors, which I was like, oh, let's go with the lilies. And then the sort of green ones were good. Just kind of fill it out so once I get these stuck into place these cards will be complete and like I said I'm going to turn my flashlight on so you guys can get a, a better look at how like shimmery sparkly these hummingbirds and the splatter is with these mica stains they're just oh, love and these hummingbirds are just they really are they're just so adorable like look at them and yeah sparkly love it so 
Like I said in the intro, I will have links to all the things in the description box below the video. I'll have my supply list with links to all the supplies used. And then at the very end of this video in the end screen, I will have links to those playlists I mentioned. So the playlist with the uh, Distress Mica Stain and the playlist of all the videos I've done using all the other lovely or many of the other lovely layer die sets. So that'll be at the end as well. And yeah, thank you guys so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping, commenting, letting the robot overlords know you guys like what you're seeing. Subscribe if you haven't, I'd love to have you. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.